faith that we are put right with God. It is by our confession that we are saved. The scriptures say, whoever believes on him will not be disappointed. This includes everyone, because there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. God is the same Lord of all, and richly blesses all who call to him. As the scripture says, everyone who calls out to the Lord for help will be saved. But how can they call to him for help if they have not believed? And how can they believe if they have not heard the message? And how can they hear if the message is not proclaimed? And how can the message be proclaimed if the messengers are not sent out? As the scripture says, how wonderful is the coming of messengers who bring good news. But not all have accepted the good news. Isaiah himself said, Lord, who believed our message? So then faith comes from hearing the message, and the message comes through preaching Christ. Stoll is the executive officer of the Fink River Mission. He is responsible for the oversight of all the work. Through the preaching of God's Word and the administration of the sacraments, the Holy Spirit has worked to establish and extend the Church of Jesus Christ among the Aboriginal people in Central Australia. We see the role of the Fink Remission as supporting that church, providing the sort of inputs and skills which this local church will not be able to supply from within its own ranks for some time to come. This is in the area of uh, theological training, translation skills, and uh, teaching of the congregations about what it means to be church. This church is quite large, not only in numbers. There are some 3,000 Aboriginal Christians belonging to the Lutheran Church in Central Australia and some 80 locations spread over an area which would be approximately the size of Victoria. Some of these congregations exist right here in Alice Springs while others are as far away as 800 kilometres. The training of Aboriginal pastors, evangelists and other church leaders is crucial in the ongoing development and growth, and therefore the very future of the church. The degree to which leaders of the church know and understand the scriptures really determines the church's strength or weakness in the long term. The best way we have found of achieving a fuller understanding of the scriptures is to conduct courses for church leaders on a continuing basis. These courses are held four times a year for a duration of a week. They are held in different locations, but always out bush in the people's own environment. The church leaders courses are mainly attended by pastors and evangelists, but are open to and attended by other interested people. All the teaching sessions are prepared well in advance by the person who is to present the subject matter. This is either one of the FRM pastors or one of the lecturers from the Luther Seminary who visit once a year. As in this case, where Pastor John Kleinick from Luther Seminary is teaching on the life of Moses. Later on, uh, this week I want to talk about how the people of Israel were sprinkled with blood at Mount Sinai after God gave them the Ten Commandments. So I want to tell you what God told Moses about the use of blood in the Old Testament and its importance. 
Translations are always made in at least two and sometimes three languages. Pastor Paul Albrecht is translating into Western Aranda, while Pastor Paulus Wiljuka translates into Pichinjara. The scripture references are also read in the available translations of the Aboriginal languages. These occasions also provide the opportunity for combined worship and fellowship. Daily devotions are conducted by different people attending the courses. Here, Pastor Traugat Malbunga is leading devotions. There are also smaller regional courses held, often in response to a request by the Aboriginal pastors or evangelist, who see a specific need in their parish. As manpower and time permits, teaching is also provided for all members of a congregation. Pastor Davy Inkamala and Gary Stoll are teaching here about how we are all part of the body of Christ and each member has a part to play in the work of the church. They are using a common Aboriginal form of communication where one person leads the subject matter and the other supplements the information given whenever he feels additional points need to be made. We have 14 Aboriginal pastors who are responsible for the day-to-day -day caring of various congregations. They are responsible for the church services and devotional life of their people. Aboriginal pastors can have up to eight congregations under their care. This involves quite a bit of travelling and some of it a considerable distance, making it hard to get around to all the congregations on a frequent basis. The pastors are assisted by evangelists, lay preachers, who are usually resident within the congregation. Their role is to conduct the church services and daily devotions when the pastor cannot be there. But not all the congregations have a resident evangelist. The training of evangelists is not kept up with the rapid growth of the church. This is one of our concerns we need to address more vigorously, because God's people cannot grow without regularly hearing God's word. Here we see the young people of Tea Tree being prepared by Pastor Emmanuel, learning the Apostles' Creed in preparation for their confirmation. <coughs> The majority of people are not literate and so find learning things such as hymns off by heart very important. Pastor Theo Windy is instructing a small group of men in preparation for their baptism. Alice Springs is a city of 25,000 people, and of those 25,000, 5,000 are of Aboriginal descent. Ivan Christian is the FRM parish worker among the Aboriginal people in Alice Springs. The Aboriginal people live in many different areas of the town. Some live within the town in normal houses, whereas others prefer to live with their own community groups in the fringe camps which are scattered around the town. There are 18 fringe camps and in these fringe camps there are something between 1100 and 1500 people living. These fringe camps are serviced by Pastor Ely and Theo and they hold services in the camps themselves rather than expecting the people to come to the central church. This way church is much more approachable and it's much easier for people to hear God's word, particularly now that they can hear God's word in their own language, delivered to them by their own relatives. I also help with the work in the fringe camps scattered around town and I 
conduct devotions and also give some instruction to Aboriginal people. These people are keen to hear God's word, just like people anywhere. People are lost until they know that they've been found in Christ, that only Christ can give direction for life in a world that has lost its purpose. Obviously any work with people can be frustrating, particularly with people who do not really know where they belong because they're pressured by their own society, they're pressured by white society. But one incident really brings joy to me when I get despondent. One day I was in the hospital and I was visiting a man, an old man who was on his deathbed. I knew that man and I knew he'd been a drunkard. He used to be very rough to his family sometimes. And the man knew that I was worried when I prayed with him. He looked across to me and he said, it's okay, Ivan. I know that Jesus has forgiven me. I know I've been a sinner, but Jesus died on the cross. He paid for my sins and he's waiting for me to come to be with him. In the past, many people have not had access to schooling. So, to enable some of these people to read God's word for themselves, the mission has in recent times commenced adult literacy classes. The material has been designed in such a way that anybody who has become literate can use this method to teach others to read. At Hermansburg, where the mission has run a school for many years, children have had the opportunity to learn to read. The schooling is still continuing, but instead of being the one school where all students come, there are now 14 different family schools which the teachers go out to. All the teachers work out from the Central Resource Centre at Hermansburg. Peter Temme is the principal of the schools. At Hermansburg we, we acknowledge that the Aboriginal people amongst whom we work are intelligent, responsible people who are able to make decisions for themselves. They have a culture and lifestyle of their own which is passed on through their education system. Many people have now moved out of Hermansburg and have established their own places called outstations. FRM, Fink River Mission, has been requested by many of the family leaders to provide a teacher for these family schools. A basis is using English and we also place a major emphasis on teaching numeracy and literacy. Christian Bible stories are also taught which supports the family Christian life that goes on in the camp. Hey, you've got a little bit of dust in your eyes, see? You've got a little bit of dust. In the beginning, God created heaven, the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Bible translation always involves a team. Pastor Paul Albrecht has prepared the first draft of Genesis chapter 1 and Pastor Narsen Ungwanaka and Gary Stoll are working with him in checking to ensure it is true to the original meaning as well as finding the best way of expressing it in current usage of Western Aranda. Now, it's the whole uh, need for translation is so that you can get God to speak to people in a way and in a form that they can understand. Uh, the translation project I'm currently involved in is, is a, a Bible history of the Old Testament. Uh, that particularly is, is uh, these stories are not at all available at the moment, so this is something new that's being done and probably uh, extremely important for the life of the church. Despite the many setbacks and frustrations, and the human weakness and failing, God's promises never fail. He has greatly blessed the preaching of his word, 
and we are confident that he will continue to do so into the future. As an Aboriginal Christian once said to a missionary at Hermansburg, you white people worry too much about all sorts of things. The most important thing is for the gospel to be preached and taught. When people hear the gospel, something always happens to them because God's word has its own power. My word is like the snow and the rain that comes down from the sky to water the earth. They make the crops grow and provide seed for sowing and food to eat. So also will be the word that I speak. It will not fail to do what I plan for it. It will do everything I send it to do.